The topic for this video is the Monroe Doctrine, and as far as growth goes, we're going to be looking at how the United States grew in terms of their foreign policy with other countries. So, give you a little background to start. So, in this particular time in 1823, when the Monroe Doctrine happens, you're going through a period of tremendous change. Spain and Portugal, two European countries, have lost their colonies. They colonized most of the New World, where they were two of the first countries, but most of their colonies in Central and South America have had rev revolutions and have gained their independence. These new countries, after the revolutions, are, are very weak. They're just getting started. Think about the way the United States was when it was first getting started, a very weak government. The United States is happy that these countries are getting their independence, and it doesn't want European countries to come back in and take over these countries again, especially because their governments are so weak. This would spread, threaten the spread of freedom if these countries came back and the United States wouldn't want that, but it would also threaten the United States' expansion. The United States is looking to expand across North, North America, and if these European countries were to come back, it would definitely threaten their, their expansion and their growth in the United States. Russia is also threatening to claim land um, in North America and in Oregon as well. So let's take a little look at the map here. So you can see most of this area is colonized by Spain, Portugal, England. This is Brazil here. This was a, a Portuguese colony. Everything in this orange tan color here was all Spanish territory. You see England in the pink, France in the green, and Russia up here in Alaska and down. And then if you look afterwards in the time period we're dealing with, you see that these countries are now all independent countries. All right, so here is Popeye because the United States is going to be getting stronger. This is what the Monroe Doctrine says. It says basically that the American continents, North and South America, are now free and no one can mess around with them, especially Europe. Any European powers have to stay away from this area. Um, the United States even goes further than to say if anyone comes in and tries to take these territories over again, then it's basically an attack on the United States and the United States will deal with it like they were attacking them. So basically the United States is saying, Europe, stay out of North and South America, don't colonize anymore, and if you do, you gotta deal with us. Now that's, those are some big words from the United States. The reason that the United States could say something like that to European powers is because Britain was on board. Um, if Britain didn't want to listen to the United States, then they wouldn't have to. Britain is still the most powerful country in the world. But luckily President Monroe, Monroe knew that England was on his side because England made tons of money trading with these new independent countries. So England didn't want anyone to take these new countries over either. So now that England is on Monroe's side, no one messed with them and the Monroe Doctrine stood up. All right, so what happened because of the Monroe Doctrine? Basically, the United States says, Europe, get out of North and South America. Don't mess around with this area of the country anymore. This is our area. We're the leaders of, of, this, of this place. So the United States is going to claim to be the sole power in the New World, very different from previous years that we've studied. Latin America is going to love the United States and kind of look at the United States as its protector. And that's going to be a relationship that the United States is going to have a good relationship with for a number of years. The Monroe Doctrine is going to be used as a reason why the United States can acquire future lands like Texas and California from Mexico and even Hawaii later on. And this is the biggest effect is that the United States is now taking a lead role in foreign affairs. It's telling Europe what to do. Um, kind of, because without England, um, they wouldn't listen. But definitely the United States is now feeling better about itself, feeling strong, and telling people um, who's boss. If you look at this, this is a cartoon, a modern-day cartoon, but the Monroe Doctrine even today is often used. And you see here is uh, the United States pointing a big gun at a European king, saying, stay away from Puerto Rico. And this is actually a cartoon from the early 1900s. The Monroe Doctrine is used even into the 1960s. So just to conclude, the world is changing. You saw that in those maps how the European countries were losing their power and losing their holds on col colonial possessions in the New World. The United States steps up to defend these new nations, and it wasn't just that they were being nice to these new countries. They were also protecting their own interests in defense. England is going to support Monroe's uh, doctrine about staying away because it makes them money, and it makes Europe listen that England's on board. 
and England and the United States now are going to begin a time where they're going to be pretty close friends. The U.S. is now going to become the powerful leader of North and South America, and they begin to use the Monroe Doctrine to protect their own interests in North America and expand their territory across the rest of the continent.